I honestly do believe that they will shift to a free-to-play formula someday. All right, that aged well. It's been a whole year, and a lot of things have changed, so let's get into it. Pretty much the only reservation I had with recommending Naraka in 2023 was the pay-to-play model. Especially with a game as unique as this one, there's just no way to guarantee that you'll like it before spending your money on it. With that no longer being an issue, I can 100% wholeheartedly recommend trying it. If you clicked on this video, that means you're at least slightly interested, but if you're on the fence, I'll definitely push you to one side or another. I'm not getting paid to review the game favorably, these are my unfiltered and honest thoughts going into 2024. First of all, Naraka is about as far from dead as ever, with its 24 hour peak on Steam being not so far from the all time peak, and that's at the end of the season where it always slows down a little bit. That's no doubt due to the fact that it's free to play, and of course, those numbers don't even include Xbox and the relatively newly released PS5 version. However, if you're a solos player like me, trying to get a match outside of peak hours can still be kind of painfully slow, and I'll get to why that is later in the video. Broadly though, 2023 really proved Naraka's staying power, so you would absolutely not be jumping into a dying game if you get in on it now. If you're not familiar with what Naraka is exactly, I'd describe it as an easy to learn, difficult to master, fast paced melee battle royale. That's how I'd classify the game in a broad sense, but I can't emphasize enough just how unique it is, and over the almost two years that I've been playing it, no other game has even entered the same realm of gameplay quality that Naraka has. As of now, there are 18 different characters, all with three different selectable skills and ultimates each that make for basically unlimited variety. You'll only want to pick one or two of them to main at the start, because the road to mastery can be kind of a long one. The weapons are just as diverse, but in this case, it's actually a good idea to get proficient with all of them since you never know what you're going to pick up in a BR. It can be pretty difficult to get out of the beginner stage when you're starting out, but once the combat and movement systems click for you, it will be beyond satisfying to play. As with any game that has a high skill ceiling and depth of combat, it attracts its fair share of sweaty players, so if you're someone that likes to try hard, you are in for a ride, since there's basically an infinite amount of things to learn and continuously improve at. You can totally still have fun as a casual player with modes like Capture the Spirit Well and Showdown, but I'd encourage everyone to dip their toe into Ranked and try to learn a few advanced techniques and combos. Custom matches are a fantastic way to practice up in a low stakes environment, so I highly recommend doing plenty of 0 to 3 band customs to get the hang of things. The combat revolves around a complex blend of basic attacks, focus attacks, parrying, spacing, and more, giving you a ton of freedom to kind of fight however you want. Naraka really has ruined me for other games, where I find myself feeling restricted and desperately missing mechanics like scale rush and grapple. I honestly can't talk up the gameplay enough, and I can only hope you take my word for it and try it out for yourself so you can feel how fluid it is firsthand. As for the future, Naraka's momentum isn't stopping with going free to play and releasing on PlayStation, as they've been hard at work developing a mobile version that I actually got to test out firsthand while visiting China to watch the J-Cup World Championship. They had a whole setup in downtown Chengdu, and if you're someone who's half decent at mobile games, unlike me, I could see it being a lot of fun and attracting a lot of players. From what I learned while I was over there, the devs have an undying passion for Naraka, and no one wants to see the game do better than they do. The point is that we're in good hands. There was a live showcase of the new weapon shown at J-Cup as well, which was super exciting, and if you're just hopping into the game, you can continue to expect a constant, well-paced stream of new weapons like this, new heroes, and bi-weekly patches. I guess I'll get into some of the critiques I still have, because as much as I adore this game, it's not perfect. Luckily, these things could probably be resolved pretty easily, and once again, I gotta say that they likely will be. The first thing we need is to be able to free train while in queue. There's no reason that you shouldn't be able to, and it's essential for practicing. I'm super guilty of immediately hopping back into queue after dying, instead of taking a minute to practice the combo I just messed up, and I'm sure a lot of you are as well, but it wouldn't be an issue whatsoever if we could just do both at once. It would very much encourage staying in queue longer as well, which would have a snowball effect for reducing overall queue times. My biggest criticism besides that is the fact that this setting exists for console and Xbox app PC versions. I've pretty much been on a tirade against this setting for my entire Naraka career, since it artificially pumps bots into matches and totally undermines the leaderboards outside of Steam. 
If you want to learn more about that, I'll link a video down below, but if you're new and just want to know whether you should have it on or off, the answer is off. Unfortunately, bots are still present, even with the setting turned off, but they make up a small fraction of the lobby. This next thing isn't so much a criticism, but something I think would be very cool to see, at least for solos, is a transition to Immortal War as the main mode. Naraka is absolutely nothing like any BR you've ever played before, so it does not have to play by the same rules that they do. It doesn't need to boast lobbies of 50 to 100 players for the sake of scale alone. Naraka already reinvented the Battle Royale wheel, so switching to a much smaller 12 to 16 player format would just set it apart even further. It would dramatically increase the speed of queues, essentially eliminate the need for bots, and speed up the mid-match gameplay itself. It's not something that I think is absolutely necessary, like the previous two things I mentioned, but I certainly believe it would be beneficial, and honestly just a really cool change of pace. Okay, refocusing a bit, Naraka is in a great spot going into 2024, and there's a whole lot of potential here to take advantage of in the coming months. Ever since last year, this is basically the only game I've touched, and I'm still not even close to mastering all aspects of the game. I think that's actually why it stays engaging for so long, because it's basically impossible to feel like you know it all. The community is extremely friendly to new players, with Twitch streamers being willing to answer any and all questions, and even random people in custom lobbies are usually more than happy to give advice if you ask for it in the room chat. If you've been unsure about trying Naraka, I'll just reiterate that the game is free, so why not download it and see what you think after a couple hours. There's a whole lot to explore once you're in. You can complete the tutorials, which I do recommend for the basics, check out all the weapons and heroes, look through all the beautifully designed skins, many of which can be obtained freely, and when you're ready, definitely watch some tutorials on YouTube for a more proper introduction to some important mechanics. I'll link all the ones I recommend down below in the order that I think they're best to watch. Please ask any questions down in the comments of this video as well, I can almost guarantee you I'll heart it or reply to it. That essentially wraps up my thoughts on Naraka Blade Point in 2024. It's still my favorite game of all time, with unmatched gameplay, cosmetics, and community, and now that it's gone free to play, and is available on all the main platforms, I have absolutely no reservations calling it a must-try game. That's all for me for 2023, I'll see you next year. Mm -hmm.